Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a good week and is looking forward to a fantastic weekend staying healthy and strong, making sure to exercise, get some fresh air. Uh, in this class, students, we are looking at task one writing, comparing uh, some maps. This is a members uh, chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. We will have an all chat class coming up in 90 minutes, uh, looking at the listening section, parts three and part four. Hi, Amir. Hi, Sammy. Good to see our members joining in on time. While we wait for some more of your classmates, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there, and for the general IELTS, visit us at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com on both of those websites. We have loads and loads of materials for you. I'll quickly show these sites to you. This is the academic one here at aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to join the premium package. And for the general IELTS, it's the green background at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com, and you can click that big red button to join the premium package there. Students, if you have questions, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly answer your inquiries. If you're looking to get our books in hard copy, uh, you can order our exams from Amazon, AE Helps Academic IELTS, and GE Helps General IELTS. So we have this task one class right now, and again, we'll have listening part three and four coming up a little bit later, and then we'll get right into today's class. We'll have classes tomorrow as well, speaking part two and speaking part three. Here's the question for today's class. You can always find the question in the video description uh, also for reference, and of course, we post these questions and sample essays on our YouTube community board as well for everybody to look back and practice. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Maksud. Hassan. Jai Neil. Good to see many of you in the class. All right. Uh, so uh, I believe this question is coming out of one of the uh, past Cambridge papers. Uh, let's read the question first carefully, and then we'll get into our step-by-step -step, uh, production of the essay. Here we go, IELTS task one writing. You should spend about 20 minutes on this task. The following maps show the city of Stokeford in two years. Summarize the main features and make comparisons where relevant. My camera just decided to fall asleep there. Just give me a second and I'll bring you back on board. This camera, I have to switch it off. It, tends to take a snooze sometimes. So here we go, we'll get you back on board here. Maybe the camera got scared of this question. But you shouldn't be scared of these types of questions. They're not that bad. Um, they're a type of diagram question. There we go. And back we are with the screen. Um, all right, so uh, one more time. The following maps show the city of Stokeford in two years. Summarize the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Uh, write at least 150 words. That's a minimum. Uh, somebody sent me an email yesterday and they asked me if there is a word limit uh, for task one and task two. Uh, the answer is no. Students, there is no word limit. So there is no maximum number of words to write. Um, of course, the way you have to think about this is 150 is minimum. So if you're looking for task completion, which is important for your band score, you have to write at least 150 words. But most band 7, 8, 9 essays will be a little bit longer, Okay, especially band 8, band 9 they'll be definitely closer to 200, 220 words even for task uh, one. Uh, of course, you have to stay within the 20 minutes. So instead of thinking about the word limit, think about the time limit. You don't want to spend more than 20 minutes 
on this task, you definitely want to leave 40 minutes for your task too. That's the key. And also you should always think quality before quantity. So it's better to write 180 words of good, clear, clean writing than 220 words which have mistakes grammatically and so forth. So quality over quantity. Okay, that's really important. All right, uh, let's take a look at these maps here. So here we have the uh, town of uh, Stokeford in 1930 and Stokeford in 2010. Um, I'm going to enlarge this because obviously it's a little bit hard for you to see. So here we go. It's a little bit bigger for you. So this is Stokeford in uh, 1930. And uh, you have your north, west, east, south compass here. And then you have the features. So you have um, a bridge here, which clearly makes this a river that goes under the bridge. And then here you have a road. You have some cows labeled farmland. Uh, and then here you have some buildings, some structures, the primary school, shops, post office. And we can assume that these smaller rectangles are uh, houses. As we move further towards the south, uh, we can see some more farmland here, gardens. We see a large house, so this is a large property here. And then of course, uh, here we have the name of the river. The river is Stoke. Obviously the town is probably named after that. And then it shows you that these little squares are the houses. Okay. All right, and then of course we have the town on the other side as well. Now we don't need to get too far into this just yet. Uh, we don't need to look at the details for the introduction, okay? Uh, the introduction, students, uh, is the overview and the paraphrase. I'm still seeing a lot of students writing a separate introduction uh, from the overview or from the main feature, okay? So your first step is your introductory paragraph. I'm going to try to do this a little bit differently because um, I still see a lot of students writing these as separate sentences. So the introductory paragraph is uh, one or a, let's say, a paraphrase of the question with details plus the main feature. Okay. The introductory paragraph is equal to the overview. Now, I'm guessing that on some websites, maybe even on some Cambridge websites, uh, you're seeing these as separate paragraphs, but really believe me that that's awkward in writing. Um, it's very rare that a paragraph is just one sentence, okay? So is that clear for everyone? Uh, I'm just gonna write that for you in a note, okay? It's very rare to see a one sentence paragraph in good essays. Definitely not in IELTS, okay? So, yeah, so Baekjeon says you need to, I, that the teacher says I need to separate the overview from the introduction. Absolutely not. Um, Baekjeon, um, this is the logic here, okay? So I'm getting a little bit stuck up on this because it's frustrating for me uh, to see this kind of bad writing. Um, and again, when you're not sure about who says what, okay? And this is a tip, members. Uh, when you are not sure which teacher to listen to, rely on your logic and the why question. Okay, so 
here, members, you're, you should be asking me. I think a lot of students blindly believe teachers. They just believe the teacher, whatever they say, and then they say, okay, I'll just follow whatever the teacher is saying because they must know the truth. But that's not right, okay? Uh, we don't always know uh, the better way as teachers. We also often just pass on what we hear from others. So you should ask the logic of why questions, right? So um, here's the two questions, okay? Why separate the, it even seems weird to write this, but the introduction from the overview and then the opposite question would be why not separate the introduction from the overview, okay? So this is, uh, in science, this would be called your hypothesis. And this would be called your null hypothesis. And good scientists will say that the null hypothesis can be more important than the hypothesis, okay? So yeah, we will get to uh, this essay here in just a moment, I promise you. But I want you to be really good thinkers, not just uh, a really good uh, score on the IELTS. The two are connected, obviously, and uh, our hope is always to produce uh, brilliant minds, uh, whoever watches these lessons and uses our products, okay? So here, uh, these are the two questions. Why separate the introduction from the overview? Why not separate the introduction from the overview? So I want you to answer these. Instead of me answering this, um, I want you to answer these for me. So Hassan, I know you're quite the brilliant thinker. Dr. Krishna, you have a PhD. Uh, so we have some really smart students here. Um, let's answer these, okay? Critically thinking. Why would you separate the introduction, meaning paraphrasing the question, uh, from the overview? Why would you want to do that? What is, what's your logic for the reader, for your audience, okay? And if you ever get into a discourse, meaning an academic debate with your teacher, maybe they'll be able to convince you that they're right, okay? So what do you think? Don't, don't believe me. Don't believe your other teacher. What do you think? What's the logic? What's the reasoning here? Why would you want your reader to stop for a long pause before reading the main feature. What would be the sense of this? So let's write the overview. Maybe one way to do this is let's do this. So let's write the uh, paraphrase with details, then we'll write the main feature, and then we'll look at them separately, and we'll look at them together. Of course, let's look at an example. That could help, right? So um, keep thinking of your answers, but you don't have to answer me yet. Uh, let's go back to the question. Let's do it that way, okay? So uh, give me the paraphrase. So here we have the following maps show the city of Stokeford in two years. Summarize the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay, so uh, give me a paraphrase of this. The following maps show the city of Stokeford in two years. So this one sentence, paraphrase it and give me some more details. Okay, and then um, we'll, um, we'll compare them. Okay, Hassan, I see that you're answering, and Abhishek, I see that you're answering, which is good. Okay, uh, let's keep those in mind. Uh, let's do it this way. So I'll come back to the maps here. Okay, so the maps show Stokeford in 1930, and the maps show Stokeford in 2010. Okay. And then um, just looking here at the map, we can see that in 2010, there are way more houses. Uh, there's no farmland and so on, okay? So we see those. Those are probably a part of the main feature. Let's just paraphrase first, okay? Let's paraphrase and uh, write that first sentence, okay? So um, let's see. Abhishek says, the maps illustrate the layout of the city of Stokeford in 1930 and 2010. Okay, sure, that's good. 
Uh, Beckjohn says the given two blueprints depict the changes which occurred in the town of Stokeford located on a river in the years uh, 1930 and 2010. That's nice as well. Uh, Kyber says the given maps provide information about the development of Stokeford town over a period of 80 years um, in, uh, with a snapshot of uh, 1930 and 2010. Yeah. Okay, Kyber, that works. Give the years, Kyber. Give the years. 80 years is good to show. And uh, also give the years. Hassan says the two maps illustrate significant changes that took place in the city of Stokeford in 1930 uh, and 80 years after. Okay, good, Hassan. 80. 80 years after. Um, Amir says the provided maps depict a snapshot of Stokeford in 1930 and 2010. Very good. Okay. Yeah, snapshot is okay. Snapshot is like a picture, Amir. Yeah, you can use snapshot, sure. Okay, so the given maps, you can use blueprints. They are blueprints as well of the town. The given blueprints show a snapshot of the buildings and layout of uh, Stokeford in uh, 1930 um, and eight decades later in 2010. Okay, so I'm gonna write something similar to what many of you wrote, okay, using of course some lexical resource and so forth. That's good, all right. So the given blueprints show a snapshot of the buildings and layout of Stokeford in 1930 and the changes eight decades later in 2010. Okay, all right. Um, we might even add geography in here, buildings, geography. And let's make it even more fancy, infrastructure. Okay, infrastructure would be like roads, bridges, all right? So giving you some vocabulary here as well. Um, so one more time, the given blueprints show a snapshot of the buildings, geography, and infrastructure of Stokeford in 1930, and the changes eight decades later in 2010. All right, okay, we're on track here. Uh, Angelina says the following blueprints depict the city of Stokeford in two moments in time, the years 1930 and 2010. Very good. Bisser, welcome to our group of members. Make sure to send me an email so I can hook you up with those exclusive videos. Welcome aboard. All right, so now let's do the main feature. So this is what what we have so far, this is what some teachers would call the introduction, right? Okay. And then they would say, all right, now write an overview. Overview here would be something like the main features. Okay. So here we go. Let's look at the map. All right. Um, now, when you look at these maps and you compare them and you're looking at the main feature uh, or the main features, you don't need to go into details like primary school and gardens and so on. Uh, you just have to look at the most observable difference. And the most observable difference when you're comparing diagrams or maps, you can get by just looking at the largest circles that you can compare. So if I look at 1930, I can circle farmland because that's quite significant, right? And I can circle these... Um, buildings here, which uh, is basically the town. And then here I have a big circle like this, which is basically the town, right? Um, so that's kind of my big circles. And that's my main feature. So what can we say about uh, the most significant change that happens in these eight decades uh, in the town of Stokeford? 
So what would you say? Write a sentence, okay? Yeah, Abhishek says farmlands, Kyber says homes. Put the two together, write a sentence, and you got your main feature, all right? So Angelina says, or is asking, as for the question, sir, hypothesis and introduction are actually different things. Um, Angelina, that's, uh, sorry, I might have confused you there a little bit. Uh, I'm not saying the introduction's a hypothesis. Um, the question here is the hypothesis that I posed at the beginning, okay? All right, um, Kyber says, farmland changes to homes. Kyber, you have to put that into a little bit of a more descriptive sentence. Okay, so Angelina, I'm not talking about the introduction as a hypothesis. That's not what we're talking about here. It was the question that we posed or the response to that question, as you'll see. Okay. All right. Uh, Kyber says, overall, the town underwent some major changes with dramatic increase in residential areas and a corresponding reduction in farmland. Kyber, that's brilliant. Nice use of vocabulary. A brilliant band nine uh, start there. Okay. Uh, Karen Veer says, at first I shot, it is clear that farmland was converted into urban areas with the construction of buildings, specifically homes um, or houses, as the key says. But yes, Karen, that works. Okay. So if anybody is coming up with similar concepts, you're definitely on the right uh, track. So... Uh, it's something that's very immediate, right? So when we circle those uh, main features, it's very immediate. We see those right away, okay? All right. So let's write that quote-unquote overview, okay? So immediately... It is apparent that over the course of 80 years, the farmlands in Stokeford had undergone development to become residential areas with homes okay sure all right so here we have our introduction and then here we have our overview okay now um when we discussed punctuation many many classes ago i'm sure some of you weren't even members at that time um we talked about what commas mean uh, what periods mean, what paragraphs mean, and so on, okay? Um, and one way to think about this in reading, because all we're really doing here is in reading, this is a, called a half stop, okay? Uh, this is what's called a full stop, okay? Now, when we go between paragraphs, what you can think about is a double stop, Okay, so twice that of a period. So when you're reading, if you're reading to an audience, a ledger or a business plan or some kind of presentation, then ideally your intonation, your enunciation uh, pays very close attention uh, to these rules or you pay very close attention to these rules and you read accordingly. So when you're thinking half stop, um, you can think about it as a half a second you can think about it as a full second, okay? You can think about it as two seconds, okay? So that's another way. Now, why do we do these? So why do we make these kinds of stops? Well, I'm sure as many of you know, it's because of the type of relationship between the phrases and the elements, okay? So uh, when you have a comma, there's a closer relationship between these two phrases uh, as that where you have a period. When you have a period, then there's going to be a less of a relationship between the next element. Okay, it's, I hope everybody's following me here. And when you do a double stop, basically what's happening is a new but relevant, not related, relevant idea. 
okay? So this is where, uh, in if you think about task two writing, uh, we'll introduce one reason and then we'll introduce another reason after uh, the two second stop or we'll introduce uh, an advantage and then after the two second stop we'll introduce a disadvantage. So they're relevant ideas but they're not really connected ideas. I hope everybody's kind of following me so far. Okay. So here what I'd like to ask you to do is uh, follow with me on this read. Okay. So I'm going to get you to read with me both versions. So I'm, I'm, I'm really speaking to your logic here rather than uh, agree with me or agree with your teachers that say you should separate these and so on. Okay. So here we go. Uh, just read with me. So the given blueprints show a snapshot of the buildings, geography, and infrastructure of Stokeford in 1930 and the changes eight decades later in 2010. Immediately, it is apparent that over the course of 80 years, the farmland in Stokeford had undergone development to become residential areas with homes. Okay, that's where we have paragraph separation. All right, uh, Jainil, I'm not going to go into colons and semicolons right now because that's too much information and we're going to miss the point. Okay, all right. Um, so now... Maybe I'll just do this as a copy-paste, so we'll have it for future reference as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same, and uh, we'll read it as one paragraph, okay? All right. So here we go. Let me just... Erase this. And I'm hoping that maybe some of you will eventually convince some of your teachers to, rather than following what people say or what they read, to follow logic. Okay, so here is the introduction, which in fact is an overview as well. Okay, it's an expository essay. Okay, so now let's read this with the one second break here instead of the two second break. Okay, all right, um, so here we go. Read with me. The given blueprints show a snapshot of the buildings, geography, and infrastructure of Stokeford in 1930 and the changes eight decades later in 2010. Immediately, it is apparent that over the course of 80 years, the farmlands in Stokeford had undergone development to become residential areas with homes. Now, you as the audience, or you as the reader, reading an expository essay, which one felt more um, acceptable for you to be interested to continue reading, to um, take notice of this information? where I took a two second stop here or where I took a one second stop. Do you guys want me to do it back to back so you can have a more direct comparison? Or was that fine? So here, that's a question to you. So Hassan says the flow of ideas is better in one paragraph than two. It's very nicely put, by the way, Hassan. The flow of ideas. I'm going to put that up there because that's really nicely summarized by Hassan. So Hassan says the flow of ideas is better when it is one paragraph instead of two. Oh, and by the way, uh, I mean, the proof is in the pudding, students. So uh, when our students take the IELTS exam and they do the steps the way that we recommend it, they without fail all uh, show improvements in their band scores. Okay, so it's of course I know that your goal at this point is you're asking me which one's going to get the better band score, <laughs> right? Um, I highly believe that this one will get the better band score. Okay, and our students who take the IELTS exams and who have taken the exam before they uh, met with our materials 
usually show the same, or I should say always show the same, okay? All right, uh, the other part of logic here that I didn't, okay, so let's, let's go back to the question, okay? I, I don't wanna spoil this for you. So um, Dr. Krishna says, yeah, it definitely seems better with the second one. Um, let's go back to the original question. This is the hypothesis part here, Angelina. So uh, the hypothesis would be um, that, uh, that it's better to separate the introduction from the overview, the null hypothesis would be that it's not better to separate the introduction from the overview. Th those would be the hypotheses in this case, Angelina. Um, so uh, let's, uh, where, where am I here with my questions? Okay, so here, I'm sorry, jumping around here a little bit. Um, so these are the two questions that I posed for you. So now let's see how well you answer these. So why separate the introduction from the overview? Now, of course, Angelina, a hypothesis technically is always a statement, not a question. So the statement would be it's better to separate the introduction from the overview. Um, and the null hypothesis would be it's not better to separate it from the overview. Okay. So um, what's the answer to this? Why separate the introduction from the overview? The one that comes to my mind is to maybe give more clarity to the reader. Okay, maybe that would be that would be kind of my guess here. All right. Um, now, the second one, of course, is why not separate it? Okay, so why keep the introduction together with the overview. And again, students, really, technically speaking, the introduction and the overview are the same, okay? Um, it's because okay. That's what I say. So I say it makes more sense to give the reader the what and the why information all in the introduction. So when we're communicating scientifically, academically with each other, um, we definitely want to know not just the what, but the why. And if you look at scientific papers, if you look at good essays, in the introduction, they always introduce the what and the why, okay? That makes sense. And then they go into detailed discussion through the body paragraphs. It's no different for an expository essay like this one. Okay. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the town of Stokeford. Okay. Why are we talking about Stokeford? Because it changed. Okay. It makes sense to state that all in the introduction, which is also the overview, okay? So I spent a lot of time on that, and it's all for you, and it's all for those many, many students who are going to watch this video as well later on to understand this important logical foundation, not something that you just hear from a teacher or read from a book that's just copying someone that also said that, that has no logical foundation in that statement. Okay, it's no reason to separate here, um, and it makes for better writing. Okay, I really want you to be great writers above and beyond just getting a good score in the IELTS exam. So, enough said about that. Um, let's get on to uh, the let's get on to the actual analysis. So the body uh, paragraph here. Like I say, uh, expository essay, task one, it's really just introduction, body paragraph, summary, okay? Not a conclusion, summary. So introduction, body, summary, that's it. 150 to 200, 220 words. That's all you have to do, all right? So let's go into body, which is, by the way, there is technically no such a paragraph concept as an overview. There's only such a concept as introduction, body, and conclusion. Conclusion is AKA summary in an expository style essay. Okay. 
All right. Um, so body is the analyses. And uh, let's, uh, let's look at that. So let's analyze this. For the analyses, we want to um, indicate our main points of comparison. Um, so what should we compare first? Okay. Uh, what are the main? So we have to go most important to least important. Thanks, Angelina. I'm glad that it's having an effect on uh, not just your learning, but also the way that you analyze information and quality of information or teaching that you learn. So Abhishek says farmland. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the biggest here. So farmland, farmland, okay, uh, being converted to homes, right? Uh, more homes, all right? So uh, that would be our number one comparison, okay? That's what we started with in the overview. It makes sense to uh, write about that first. Now, when you have that, um, make sure to use the uh, compass as well, okay? So when you have the directions north, south, east, west, then make sure to use that for describing uh, this change, okay? That's why they gave that to you, okay? So farmland to houses, what would be your uh, second? So what would be the second point of comparison? What's the second biggest change? Okay, what would be the second biggest change? Anybody? So the town is located the same, Kyber. There's no change in the location of the town. So what would be your second point of comparison? I have a pretty good idea of what mine would be. Um, gardens, a primary school is bigger. That's true, uh, Bisher. Um, but what I would do first uh, is the roads, okay? Remember infrastructure. So notice that we have a road here. We have another road here, okay? We have this addition. So there's quite a few additions uh, to the roads. We have another road here and you don't see those roads. Okay. So yeah, of course we can assume that that's with the houses, but your reader doesn't know what you know. So I would say that the road infrastructure is the second most significant change, uh, in the town. And then after that, the biggest, so always go from the biggest to the smaller. So the next one would be the retirement home instead of the large house and garden. So that would be my point three for comparison. And then, yes, those of you who are very observant and saw that uh, the school, this is the primary school, has the addition of these two wings, okay? Um, that would be probably my fourth point of comparison, okay? So one would be all the ex extra houses. And then, of course, it makes sense that all those houses need access and to access those houses you need to build roads so roads would be number two then number three would be converting the large house and gardens into a retirement home that's a quite a significant difference and then my fourth change uh, would be the addition of two wings to the primary school obviously to manage the larger uh, population now other than that i don't really see much going on there's no extra bridges or anything like that, okay? All right. Um, yeah, the shops, uh, the shops have been replaced as well, so there's no, no shops, I agree. Shops would probably precede, so very good. Who said that? That was a good one. Abhishek, Abhishek says the shops have been removed. Um, yeah, I agree, the shops have been removed to make way for uh, the further houses. So I would probably put that as number four and then this is number five, okay? Because removing the shops would be significant as well around the post office, okay? Uh, those are pretty close, but anyway, let's do four or five like that. All right. Hassan says, lucky the bridge remained the same. Thank you for the IELTS committee. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right, students. So let's get into it. Let's start writing these analyses. So the farmland is first. Remember to use your compass. Okay. Uh, this would be the that part of town. This would be the that part of town. Okay. All right. So go ahead. Um, let's get into some sentence writing. 
It's not a process essay, so please don't use first, second, third. Um, it doesn't make sense here. We're not writing a process, all right? Uh, rather, I would use something like the most to start off with, okay? So I'll write the sentence, you write the sentence, I'll read out what you have, we'll compare, and then we'll gain some vocabulary and some grammar as we go along. Okay, so number one are the farmlands. Okay. So here we go. Okay, and if you really want to get fancy, you can get into some numbers. Um, so here you have uh, nine uh, homes uh, here, and then you have at least a dozen more homes here. So you can get into a little bit of numbers there as well, okay? If you're really f getting fancy, it's not absolutely necessary. All right, that's what I would write, something like that. Uh, Kyber says, Stokeford is situated in the east side of the River Stoke in 1930. There was one main road going through the town from north to south. Um, all right, Kyber, so you're doing a bit of description of 1930. I just immediately go into the comparison because the comparison will also reveal the description of the town. I think that works a little bit more efficiently than describing 1930 and then describing 2010. So I would recommend doing direct comparisons here. It's more effective. Uh, Beck John says, to begin with, it is clear that in 1930, there were um, grazing lands. They would, Beck John, those would be called grazing lands uh, situated near the river and the primary school. And um, after 80 years, they had been replaced with residential areas, uh, grazing, grazing lands. That's where animals will feed, okay? Pasture, pasture is okay, Beck Jen, just watch your spelling, okay? Uh, Karen Veer says, on deeper analysis, all of the farmland, primarily in the north, east, and southwest of the city, has been urbanized to accommodate uh, residents by building a large number of houses. Very nice, Karen Veer. Uh, notice students the use of the word urbanized uh, by Karen. Urbanized is a very nice piece of vocabulary there. Uh, urbanizing literally means to change uh, rural farm area or forest area into uh, living residential area. Okay, very nice. Amir says, after a detailed analysis, we can see that the biggest change in the city is in the farmlands in the southwest and northeast part of the city in 1930. They no longer are, uh, exist and are replaced by roughly 20 uh, houses, 20 houses, not number of houses, Amir. Don't over detail, okay? Roughly 20 houses. All right. Hassan says, to begin with, in 1930, the farmland on both sides of the main road are... Um, cut down is not good, Hassan, because cut down, we use that for forests. You don't really cut down a farmland. That's awkward. Um, they're replaced or they're developed, okay? Uh, allowing uh, more homes to be built for residents for 2010. Uh, yeah, a couple of mistakes in there, Hassan, so rethink that a bit, okay? 
Uh, Abhishek says, looking at the map in more detail, there was farmland in the northwest uh, of the layout in 1930 and southwest part also. Uh, Abhishek, you don't need to refer to the layout. Just, just say it, okay? With farmland by 2010, these are removed and replaced by homes. They're replaced by homes. Uh, you don't really remove a farmland because it's just land, okay? So careful. I know it's a little bit tricky. Uh, Pavan says, at a closer look, um, it can be observed that the most drastic change appeared to be farmlands located at the southwest and northeast side of town as, there were, as they no longer existed uh, during or in 2010 due to urbanization. Urbanization, Pavan, maybe you ran out of characters. Um, Pavan, you don't need to say the most drastic change because we have that in the introduction. Okay, and that's another reason to have the introduction and overview together so you don't repeat yourself like that, okay? So, um, yeah, just you don't have to have that repetition there. Okay, in more detail, the farmlands in the northeast and southwest of the town in 1930 no longer exist in 2010, but instead there are about half a dozen extra houses in the north and even more in the south. Okay, that's my uh, sentence for that, number one. Now, uh, number two is the road infrastructure. So uh, we have one, two, three, four new roads added uh, on both the east and the west. So we have um, two um, dead-end roads on the east and one uh, dead-end road uh, to the west. Um, now, probably this road would have like a little circle where you can go around with your car, otherwise they can't really turn around. Um, so these would also be called cul-de-sac. It's a cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac is a dead-end road where you drive down and then you have to turn back and go like that. So this kind of a road structure in English is called a cul-de-sac, cul-de-sac. Okay, and this would be some kind of a ring, ring road, okay, because it basically creates a ring. It's not quite circular enough, but uh, more or less it would be a ring road because it goes around. So that would be an accurate description. So uh, there are two additional roads to the east, two additional roads to the west, okay? Let's describe those. So, um, in order to service the additional urbanization, two roads are added by 2010 to the uh, east and two more to the west, okay? And if I wanna get really fancy, I can go, I don't even know how to write these, but I'll figure that out in a sec. Hopefully. Call the sacks, there you go are added to the east and uh, students if um, like with me right now you don't know the um, writing of these kind of words like cul-de-sac uh, then it's better to just stay with roads okay don't try to get fancy if you don't know the spelling of some very technical word you know what it is but you don't know how to spell it it's better just to write the word roads than write the word cul-de-sac with a spelling mistake okay that's a really important point so nobody's perfect in spelling. Nobody can spell every word that they know. Um, well, maybe some, but very few people. Uh, so uh, if you don't know the spelling of the word uh, that you're thinking of, then don't attempt it, okay? Don't attempt it. Uh, if you know that the word road is just gonna be simpler and you're gonna get it correct, okay? So, and a 
called a sack as well as a ring road to the west. Now we all know how to spell cul-de-sac. <laughs> all right. Um, Oh, really, Dr. Krishna? I had no idea. Interesting. Yeah. It could be a Canadian word, too. I'm not sure if... Uh, I think Americans use it as well, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's technically the same. Okay. Um, now let's see. Nazir says, the second change in Stokeford is a couple of roads added uh, to both sides of the main road, two in the east and two in the west. Very good, Nazir. Yeah, added to the... Uh, main road, or another way you could say it, Nazir is branching from the main road that goes through town, north to south, right? Absolutely, very good. Uh, Amir says, moreover, to connect the houses in the city, four additional roads were added by 2010, two of which were added to the east, and the other two were added to the west. Very nice, Amir. Really nice writing, members. Um, I can definitely see that all of you who attend these classes regularly are making leaps and bounds in your use of English. Very good. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Nice. So let's keep going. Uh, let's, uh, let's do point number three, which is the large retirement home, um, which uh, was converted from the gardens. Okay. So let's do that one, the retirement home, the gardens. I'm going to write about that, and I'll keep looking at the chat, students. I'll keep looking at the chat, so keep writing, okay? Uh, the retirement home, you can see it's a much larger building, right? So this uh, large house had uh, three parts. Here it has five parts, uh, so it's become a much larger building, and of course one of the roads service uh, this uh, retirement home, as well as the extra houses that are found along there, okay? All right, doing fantastic. Okay, so let's do that. In addition, the large house located near the center of town. Later became a retirement home with the addition of a north and south wing. Okay, so when you have a building like this, okay, um, and you have another part coming out like that, or even with the school like that, those would be called wings. They're the wings of the building, okay, the wings of the building. All right. Let's see. Anybody write that one yet? Not quite? Okay, well, I'll read what uh, Abhishek wrote. Moving forward, in the urbanization, a couple of roads had been added to the east and west by 2010, uh, which uh, are a convenience for people to access their homes. Yeah, Abhishek, convenience for residential people, a little bit, a little bit strange, I think. Uh, the other thing, Abhishek, that you should be careful of is... Um, had been added in the East and West in 2010. We don't know that, but we definitely know that they've been added by 2010. So we don't know what year they were added, Abhishek. That's why it's by instead of in. Okay. All right, Hassan says, a new retirement home was constructed in the same uh, location as a large house in 1930. That's interesting, Hassan, but we don't know that either because um, the large house... The original large house might still be, and in fact, it looks like it still is, the same building. So um, the retirement home, Hassan, 
uh, wasn't constructed in the same location. It's rather that the large house was converted into a retirement home with the addition of these two wings. So again, students, the more accurate you are with these descriptions and the use of language, definitely the higher mark you're going to get. Okay. Uh, from that sentence, Hassan, it sounds like the original large house had been demolished and then a retirement home. We Maybe, but it looks more like to me, like these wings were added to the uh, large house for it to become this retirement home. Okay. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, Amir says a new retirement home was also added in 2010 in the gardens. Again, same thing, con converted. Students, converted is better. When you have the same building, but you're using it for a different purpose, which is also called repurposing, okay, repurposed or converted. Those would be the words. So I'm going to end on that note for today. So notice how I wrote, in addition, the large house located near the center of town later became a retirement home with the addition of a north and south wing. The other way you could write this is uh, was converted into, okay? Or another way that you could write it is uh, had been repurposed as a, okay? So careful with that. All right, uh, students, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to leave the last few comparisons for you. I think you've picked up a lot of the language necessary for that. So uh, I leave for you the primary school and the shops as well as the summary. Okay, so finish those, uh, send those to me and I'll give you a score estimate happily. Okay, um, and then uh, I'll of course post the completed essay over the course of the next few days on the YouTube community board as well. Okay, so plus uh, shops, plus school, and then of course, uh, summary. Okay. And uh, as a final closing note, uh, question your teachers, question the methods they use. I encourage you to question uh, what I do as well. Uh, I find that I learn lots from my students throughout the years, and I'm very thankful to my students for that. So uh, rely on your logic, not just what the expert says. Okay, It's very important these days. Uh, now, uh, for those of you who enjoyed this lesson, our viewers, uh, remember to visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Uh, you're welcome, everybody. Uh, Angelina, if you're still in this class, I'm going to send you an email about your speaking interview um, in the next hour or two. So please look out for that so we can schedule that uh, class for tomorrow. So Angelina, if you're still here, I hope you heard that. Okay. So I'm going to send you an email in the next couple hours to figure out the schedule for your speaking session tomorrow. Okay. Hopefully you're hearing that. All right, um, you're welcome, everybody. Have a fantastic uh, break. I'll be back in 30 minutes with listening uh, practice for parts three and four. Bye for now.